to Jaipur Literary Festival Toronto chapter as we see in Jaipur the vibration of literature intellectual thought and a thought process which world really needs to discuss how our writers are writing and how they are influenced with the global ideas here we celebrate all those thoughts and all those ideas Halima Sadia Toronto Canada Our esteemed speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a very warm welcome to the opening gala of JLF Toronto. JLF Toronto has got off a great start. JLF is an exciting property. It brings a certain ethos, a certain spirit. Very colourful, very lively and very literary uh, to all the events it does around the world. And I'm so happy to see Toronto embracing the spirit. We've got off to a good start and I wish JLF Toronto all success. Uh, it's a great, great thing that Jaipur Literary Festival has come to Toronto. It is the first time ever and uh, today is a special day because in the morning we had this direct flight from uh, Delhi, Toronto, from India and in the evening we have this inaugural event um, of Jaipur Literary Festival, Toronto edition. So it's really, really, I'm very happy and this is all happening within one month of my arrival. So I'm really happy. Uh, this will enhance the people-to-people -people contact between our two countries and also enhance the literary um, connection between the two countries. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for both the countries to further enhance our relations. I'm delighted to be here this evening at the fermenting cellar of the distillery district of Toronto for the launch of the first edition of JLF Toronto. Now people will ask, what is the need for having another literary festival in this great city? Well, the JLF is not just another festival, most diverse and democratic festival on the planet and therefore it belongs to the most diverse city on the planet. And JLF is not just a literary festival, it is really a platform of ideas. You know, at a time when we are in a post-truth world, I think it's important for the world to engage with ideas. And JLF Toronto will do exactly that. If you look at the program for tonight and for tomorrow, you have some of the best in the business discussing everything from the sacred feminine to data to travel in the age of globalization to the problems faced by the indigenous communities in Canada. So this shows you the breadth and the diversity of this festival, of this platform, and it is my hope that this festival will become a permanent part of the artistic landscape of Toronto and will invite and will welcome all literature lovers, all people who love ideas, who love debate and discussion. Hey, I'm Anubha Mehta and I'm here at the Jaipur Literally Festival in Toronto and it's amazing. We have brought a little bit of India and the world to Canada, which is very much needed. We have blurred those boundaries, those geographical boundaries, and we brought our cultures together. Tomorrow morning, I'm in a panel with the sacred feminine, Chitra Banerjee Divya Karuni, 
and Vanessa R. Sesson who look at women's lives. Have they really changed over 4,000 years? With my novel, Peacock in the Snow, who is about Maya, a modern day protagonist. And they have resurrected Sita, Ram's wife, and Yashodhara, Buddha's wife, to see if they have if they have the capacity to speak to today's challenges. Welcome to JLF Toronto, the very first edition, 2019. I hope everybody comes out here to a feast of literature, ideas, ideology, stories. And my expectation is that this goes on year after year, making Toronto more and more diverse. Presently, our future is somewhat bleak. Uh, given much of what's been happening in the environment and what festivals like this does is, is one sort of drop in the proverbial ocean to be able to connect people, to be able to allow platforms like this for different kinds of people to share different kinds of perspectives irrespective of their political backgrounds and really make sense and, and perhaps stop fearing the other, the other voice. Canada perhaps is one of the truly incredible examples of melting pot of diversity like no other. You have all kinds of people here, you welcome them, you take them into your heart and that perhaps is the primary reason that we're here. We believe that it's time for all of us uh, who believe in the written and spoken word to push back against the narrative of hatred that we have been consumed by and perhaps use writing and literature and the arts to make sense of the other. And the other, as many of you are, immigrants into this country and this society, we're not to be feared. We're only here to enrich each other's lives each other's words, each other's stories, and share our collective humanity, and share it with empathy, love, and respect. So that's what we hope that JLF can contribute to with all our incredible writers who've come from across the world. And I'm going to get William, our festival co-director. Namita, unfortunately, had to fly back home and she's not with her this time, or with us this time, she'll be back next year. But I'm going to get William to come up and say a few words about the programming. But thank you all. Uh, thank you, Ajay Virmani. Thank you, Asha Jadeja Motwani, Dr. Parishat Singh, and all our wonderful advisors. And my friend of 40 odd years, uh, Vikram Balia and Shrinka. I'm 32, so. Maybe it was one of those moon kind of friendships, but thank you all for making this happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome cool festival director, writer, William Dalrymple. We're really completely thrilled to be here uh, and to open up uh, in this amazing country. Uh, those of you who have attended the Mothership uh, know our story, but it's been an extraordinary 12 years from the first 16 people who crowded into the Durbar Hall and Diggy Palace, um, only for 10 of them to leave halfway through the first session as they were Japanese tourists who got lost on the way to Amer Fort. Uh, from that slightly wobbly opening, um, the festival has grown, Namata compares it to some creature in Puranic myth and circling the globe and then sort of churning it to produce the amrit of literature. Anyway, we'll move on from uh, these complicated metaphors. Uh, they, it's last year half a million footfalls. It's the size now of Glastonbury and Woodstock combined. Uh, and what's really special about it is because it's free, our audiences are mainly under 35. Uh, if you go to the railway station in Jaipur of an evening, you can find 5,000 kids camping down on the railway station because they can't afford a hostel, but they've come all the way to hear the writers from Assam, Tamil Nadu, from Gujarat, uh, and they're here to hear literature. And we sell, what is it, how many, how many hundreds of thousands of books in five days? 400,000, whatever it is, anyway, an enormous, 
we sell as much in four days of literature in the Jaipur Literature Festival five. bookshop as in five days as, as a Delhi bookshop does in six months. Um, it's an extraordinary moment. Everyone is there to hear the writers, to hear the writing, to discuss ideas. And there's really nothing else like it in the world. Our Toronto edition has got some extraordinary authors and it's an incredibly promising and solid start. And I'm just going to read from my wonderful co-director's uh, opening notes that she sent me uh, talking about what we have to offer. Our opening edition, writes an amateur, is brimming with ideas and excitement. Like the vibrant city of Toronto, the Jaipur Literature Festival is plural, diverse, and multilingual. We are each other's stories, across race and gender, language and culture, it is books, ideas and dialogue that define and connect our common human narratives. We welcome a stellar lineup of writers and thinkers, including Andre Nico Ayer, John Ralston Saul, Vikas Swarup, Jitra Banerjee Devakurni, Shashi Farour, speaking on Glorious Enver, William Dalrymple, who knew takes us through the anarchy. Our themes range from sacred feminine to democracy index, the migrant experience to Aladdin and other marvelous tales. Dictionaries of desire interrogate the spectrum of gender, while Isildine Abolish speaks against hatred in the face of grave and tragic provocation, and do much more. Literature is an infectious form of magic. In 2013, our keynote speaker, the great Indian writer Mahashwat Devi, declared in her address that the right to dream should be the most fundamental right. This weekend at JLF, JLF Toronto, we look forward to once again celebrating the dreaming mind. Thank you very much. Our festival co-director, ladies and gentlemen, William Dalrymple. but let's hear it, hear it, hear it once again for him. Thank you, Willie. Thank you, Namita, for putting your heart and soul into the programming and ensuring that we get these fabulous sessions. Thank you very much. Now, may I please invite Excellency Apurva Srivastava, uh, Council General of India to Toronto. Please come up on stage and say a few words. saying how happy and honored I am to be standing here today at 
the fermenting cellar of the distillery district. As Surat said, I wear multiple hats, but I'm wearing only three hats today. The hat of a reader, the hat of a writer, and the hat of the High Commission of India to Canada. And tonight, as Apurva said, is indeed a very special evening because tonight marks the culmination of a dream. A dream that I dreamt together with Sanjoy Roy of bringing the most democratic and diverse literary festival on the planet to the most diverse city on the planet. And it has taken three years because it took two years for Sanjoy Roy to discover Canada. <laughs> After that, it took six months for him to discover Toronto. And then it took a further three months for him to discover the distillery district. But I'm glad that Sanjoy completed his voyage of discovery and tonight we are here for the launch of the inaugural edition of JLF Toronto. Now people will ask, is there a dearth of literary festivals in Toronto? There is not. Of course, there are plenty of literary festivals in Toronto. So what was the need to bring in yet another festival? Well, the JLF is not just another festival. As Vidi Dalrymple told you, it is now the largest literary festival on the planet, drawing some of the biggest names in the world and drawing an audience of half a million people. And over the last 12 editions, it has evolved from an accidental visit by a group of Japanese tourists to an annual pilgrimage for global literature lovers. Now India is a very important and vibrant part of the economic, social and cultural fabric of Toronto and Canada. Many famous Indian authors have made Canada their home for decades. So we felt it was time to bring the biggest Indian literature festival to Toronto. JLF Toronto marks the arrival of a brand new platform. And this is not just a literary festival, it is really a platform for ideas. This is a platform which was made in India, but which really speaks to the world. Because imagination and ideas do not stop at national frontiers. Just look at the program for tonight and for tomorrow. You have some of the best in the business, discussing everything from the sacred feminine to identity to anarchy, from democracy to data, from travel writing in the age of globalization to contemporary issues faced by indigenous peoples. It is this eclecticism and diversity that makes JLF such a unique festival. I hope that JLF Toronto will become an important and integral part of the city's artistic scene. The strong support from the city of Toronto and from the communities that make up this amazing city will ensure that it becomes a permanent festival. And we couldn't have asked for a better venue than the distillery district. Let us all drink from the fountain of ideas over the next two days. If literature is a struggle against silence, then festivals like the JLF break that silence so that we may hear the clear voice of reason and truth. Writers take the raw material of people, places, and things and give them structure, bringing them to surging, vivid life. In the process, they not only make a significant statement on the human condition, they also add to our understanding of the world, proving that art does not merely reflect reality, it enlarges it. It is my hope that JLF Toronto will enlarge our appreciation of what the world is and what it has the potential to be. Thank you. Thank you, High Commissioner, for all your support. Now, may I please invite one of our festival patrons, Asha Jaleja Motwani. Asha Jaleja is Silicon Valley's top 10 venture capital investors who has in a portfolio over 200 technology, uh, technology companies that she seed funded. Well known among them in non-tech circle are Google, PayPal, Pin and Trust, and App Dynamics. Asha is one of the most prolific collectors of Indian modern and contemporary art. She is donating her entire collection to a museum that she is creating in San Francisco. Asha's family, Asha's family foundation donates over a million dollars 
a year creating, towards creating disruptive new learning and livelihood modalities in India. It supports more than a dozen key NGOs in India in the learning and women's freedom space. May I please invite Asha Deleja Motwani. This is just something that struck me that uh, in the you know in the valley Silicon Valley, I'm, I'm known as you know one of the better angels and VCs to spot startups. And uh, when I went to Jaipur this year for the first time, I saw GLF and I said, "This is one of the hottest startups I've seen actually." <laughs> and you know the more I dig in. As a, you know, not just as a supporter, but I think also as a team member for the long haul, I see it as a social movement that is, in very unusual ways, uh, bridging, uh, you know, a gap between the East and the West, especially between the U.S. and India, which is actually, you know, the conversations are heating up. The partnership between India and U.S. is for the first time uh, strong in, in strategic ways, in security, in economics, in finance, and in regional geopolitics. So I think this is a very exciting time for uh, JLF to be bringing um, India in such a powerful way it's in, in terms of literature, in culture, something different from software. We are, in the Bay Area, we are very used to, you know, seeing Indians and associating Indians with extremely good, solid software companies. But we haven't seen the art and the literature world, and JLF is the first entity that's bringing a, a cultural face of India to the West, to, especially to the US, and now, now of course Canada. So I think these are very exciting times for uh, for all of us to be part of this, and uh, I really do see this as one of my hottest companies going forward. So thank you.